So do you stone to death disobedient children? I see you. I see you. Do you wear clothing of made of two different weaves? I'm sorry, what? Do you make do you wear clothes made of two different weaves? Do you oh, yeah. stone to death disobedient so then, children? Well, the, first of all, those are you're quoting two different verses, okay? Yeah. We have to realize there's there's two kinds of laws in the Bible. Okay, we have moral laws and symbolic laws. Okay? So how can you symbolically stone to death a child? No, that's a moral law. Okay, so you have to stone to death. So you do so well, let's you do one at, we're doing one at a time. The first one you said was about wearing two different weaves, okay? That's a symbolic law. Once one a symbolic law. Once Christ came, he did away with the symbolic laws. You know, I'm not going to have enough time to make this whole presentation, but I just wanted to correct this man who believes, um, who was trying to convict this Christian man, uh, that the Old Testament and the New Testament are one and the same, and that if you're a Christian, you're living under the laws of the Old Testament, and that you should be, you know, tried and persecuted for those things that are horrible in the laws of Moses. And, you know, he's saying, well, you know, would you stone your kid? Would you... Uh, do you wear, you know, fabrics of two different, uh, fa uh, two different fibers and blah, blah, blah. And, and the, you know, he's taking all these things from the Old Testament. But th there's got to be known a difference because there is a difference. Uh, if you look up Exodus 24, there's, there's two different um, laws that they're spoken about. Um, you look in Hebrews 24-7 uh, um, and you see he, he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do and obey. And see, this is the Israelites agreeing to the covenants, okay? Uh, they're not just getting it forced upon them. They're saying, okay, we agree to this. And, you know, if they didn't agree to it, they could go elsewhere. But they agreed to it. They stayed. They lived under the laws of Moses, blah, blah, blah. So it wasn't forced on them. Uh, it was something they all agreed to. And then you go down a couple of verses, uh, and you go to um, Exodus 24:12. And it says, And the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me in the mount and be there, and I will give thee tablets of stone and the law and the commandment which I have written, and thou mayest teach them. Um, and see, so so he was saying in in uh, in Exodus seven that he was going to, yeah, or that he had given him a book of the covenant, um, and they agreed to it. And then he says that he's going to give them another set of of commandments, or at least he's going to solidify what he's given them on stone. And let them, you know, be brought to the people, you know, so they last forever or whatever. And so he did that. And if you read on uh, to the following chapters, uh, Moses uh, went up, got the tablets, brought them back down. Uh, Notice that uh, everybody was worshiping false idols again. They were fearing Pharaoh because Pharaoh was chasing them and you know, trying to, uh, you know, a attack them and kill them. Um, and they had just been let out of his bond ship, they were slaves to, to Pharaoh in Egypt, and they had just been freed, and, uh, you know, they, they attributed that to God, to, to Elohim, and, uh, and then, you know, Elohim was like, okay, well, here's something to govern you, and to, um, you know, you know, to uh, give you acceptance into my kingdom, basically, uh, here's my mercy and grace, and he gave them the original tablets, and then Moses came down and saw him worshiping this false idol, and broke those tablets, and then went up and got something else, and what God gave him there was the ability to, uh, and this this is my interpretation, um, but you know what what happened after he broke those tablets is he went up and got new tablets, and I believe that was God saying, hey, if they don't want me, if they want Baal or they want Pharaoh or they want some of these false idols, how about you you lead them, Moses? How about you give them the laws? How about you teach them? And that's why we call it the laws of Moses, not the laws of God, you know. And eventually that would be um, replaced by Christ in Hebrews seven. Um, where, you know, they say uh, the law made nothing perfect. Um, you can see uh, in Hebrews 7.12, for the priesthood being changed, there was also made necessity of a change also of the law. Um, let's see. Uh, and it is far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there rises another priest who is made not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testify, thou art priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing of the in a better hope did, which we draw nigh unto God, inasmuch as not without an oath he was made priest. 
and see, uh, oh wait, uh, Hebrews uh, 7.22, by so much was Jesus made the surety of a better testament. And see, this is the thing, uh, uh, Jesus sacrificed once and for all, and it goes on to that and it says, for such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily, as those high priests, to offer up a sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For he did this once, when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son, who is consecrated forevermore. And see, that's the disannulling of the Old Testament. So if these people can't, you know, say Christians... Uh, should be held to a standard of the Old Testament when we don't even follow the Old Testament. It has been annulled. There is no Old Testament. As far as doctrine is concerned, that's all been put under the bridge. That's water under the bridge. You know, whatever happened with the Hebrew people and, and whatever their rebellion was, and whatever their punishment was, or whatever God designed for them, does not apply to those who believe in Jesus. Because if we believe in Jesus, we believe that Jesus annulled the law, uh, annulled the priesthood, and replaced it with a better covenant, which I believe was given already in Exodus 24-7. It just wasn't, it didn't stick because the people uh, rebelled and started worshiping false idols. And so, you know, that's why we didn't get the, the laws that Jesus gave us uh, back in Exodus. We got those later because, you know, God wanted us to learn a lesson. You know, if we didn't want him, he would give us what we wanted, which was the leadership of a human, of a, of a weak, unprofitable, sinful, corrupt human, which was Moses. You know, and Moses had many issues. You know, Moses killed a man. Moses um, rejected God. And, and when God told him, you're going to get the priesthood, uh, uh, Moses said no, and then Aaron got it instead. And so, you know, Moses was not perfect. And, and there was nothing about him, you know, that we should believe that he was perfect. And so there's no reason to believe that the laws of Moses were perfect. And uh, that's why they, they're called the laws of Moses and not the laws of God. They were the laws of Moses. They were not perfect. And uh, there's, no, there's no reason for, for any of these people to be excited about convicting a, a Christian on the Old Testament because it just is unapplicable. It doesn't make any sense. So let's go on. He did away with the symbolic laws. The moral laws are still in force. Well, what was the point of the symbolic law? The symbolic law was to com communicate internal truths in such a way that they're deeply impressed upon the conscience of man. So why couldn't so, you just uh, so for example, tell us a passage? Okay, well then let me say this. You said that, that the first one was symbolic and you told me the symbolism there. Why didn't he just tell you right up front what he meant instead of using a symbol? It's the same way reason we have art. We artists create but the art is a human art. thing. No. Shouldn't, God, shouldn't God just say blatantly that well, this is what you did? He did, the he did in the Ten is, Commandments. The principle is the same. The, the reason that we have art is so artists can communicate some very important truths in a very vivid way that really impresses upon us what that artist is trying to communicate. Except a lot of art uses um, interpretation and a lot, so every different person would have a different interpretation of it, so that means the law is not necessarily concrete. If, if that was the only thing he did, that would be true. But God didn't just give the symbolic laws. In conjunction with the symbolic laws, he gave them commands. In other words, he actually told them, do not... How can the whole religion... <coughs> it was written in a language that was dead for a thousand years when they found the scrolls, the Greeks found the scrolls. How can you base your entire life off well, of a, a non-translatable book? Yeah, well, which language do you think was dead? It's the Aramaic that was written in. It, wasn't it was written in Aramaic, my friend. We all know it. We all know it was written in Aramaic. The no, Greeks interpreted it as they thought it was. And when the parts they couldn't interpret, they basically added it themselves. It was The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Aramaic, no, my friend. Hebrew. Yes, it was written in Aramaic. The only, the only New Testament book that may have been written in Aramaic was the book of Matthew. It's the only one. All, the, the Exodus is written in, in Aramaic, my friend. It, the whole book, the whole book basically have, is written in Aramaic. Actually, here is a perfect example of people who absolutely know nothing about the Bible and yet fight bitterly against people who believe in it. And if they just took a minute to listen, instead of trying to speak over somebody, they might learn something. But the Bible was not entirely written in Aramaic. This guy is absolutely off his rocker. He doesn't know crap about the Bible. You know, it, he says he knows about the Dead Sea Scrolls. Well, if he read the Dead Sea Scrolls, which are the most ancient writings that we have uh, to record the Bible, you know, found in, you know, near um, 
uh, Israel, you'll find that it was all written in Hebrew. It wasn't written in Aramaic. I mean, that, that was a stupid point to begin with, but just to claim that it was written in Aramaic, and Arabic is a dead language, and how can we trust the Bible? We can trust the Bible because not only do we have what we have now, but we can compare it to what was written 20, uh, 2,000 years ago, 2,200 years ago, and such from the Dead Sea Scrolls. I mean, those Dead Sea Scrolls predate Christ, and so we can compare and see not only has nothing been changed, but things have been translated accurately. People just need to spend a little more time listening and a whole lot less time talking and talking over people.